Transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. What about Is that the new intro? <laughs> Uh, and here it is. Sip it up, up. Billy Dolly Doodly Doo. We're back. Is that the new intro? <laughs> Uh, Gotta do that for the fade in. The yeah, exactly. Uh, well, welcome, dear hot dogs. You knew it was gonna happen eventually. Where like, you're not getting rid of us that easily. Yeah, we're like that Big Mac that you regret eating the night before. Uh, mm. We're always gonna be a problem Just <laughs> forever. <laughs> uh, well, after a yes. brief hiatus, Man Edition is back. It is true. Um, episode seventy, I believe. Whoop, whoop. We're here. You've made it. And there is quite a lot which you got to jam into this episode. Oh, yeah. Because there's quite a bit that we, we've neglected to cover. <laughs> I want to start, start off with a, my, brief, my brief gaming word Do this it. week. So um, thanks to Xbox Game Pass. Uh, sponsor us along with Oli. Uh, the, <laughs> I, um, I've been playing... Ba- oh, there it is. I've been playing <laughs> Batman Arkham, Arkham Knight. Oh, and nice. okay. it is a sick game that is like a midpoint between like the vibe of like the Burton movies okay. and the dark Knight. It is Interesting. Like, stylistically uh, yeah. the, the main foes are scarecrow and this new villain called the Arkham Knight. And it is hmm. fucking sick. It's one of the, I swear to God. And it's like, once again, DC coming in strong with the alternative forms of media from film. For real. It's, it's, it's a literally good story. And because it, would, it was known to be the last of the franchise mm-hmm. before they even started producing the game. So there's no more Arkham games happening. They went ape shit. So I like spoilers. Uh, mm-hmm. Barbara Gordon dies. Oh, shit. She's already in the one of the previous games. Shit. She got her spine broken. Oh yeah, and fair. she gets hit with some fear toxin and sees Batman and blows her brains out. Oh, damn, dude! They, and they just like they were ending yeah, it. <laughs> they, but then she's not dead. Batman was on fear toxin. Uh, <laughs> the the <laughs> uh, damn this po- stuff. So. Poison Ivy saves the city from uh, from a fear toxin explosion, but it kills oh. her what yeah i know it's it's cr- it's crazy shit and it's what crazy twist. good yeah and the arkham knight yeah i doubt you're gonna play a six, six-year-old game at this point uh arkham knight is jason todd the whole time it's a oh, like it's cool. like a militaristic take on the red hood yeah okay and he has like a paramilitary group that rolls in with scarecrow and takes over gotham with force oh shit yeah it's he he literally has a military with with him that's and wild. You should you should look up a picture of his suit because it's dope. It's like it's like militarized Batman. Further militarized Batman. Fair enough. And you know, it just is one of those things of like it's it's not just them, him and Scarecrow though. All the villains, all the major Batman players make an entrance. Notably, cool. like even Joker has a really interesting part to play because like in Arkham City, the previous game, Joker died. But they made a point of his blood getting put in like the uh in like getting transfused into people. The like somehow oh. they donated his blood. Oh. And those the people that got his blood started going insane and turning into more jokers. Oh jeez. And one of the people that got some of the Joker's blood was Batman. So you literally have the Joker as a bat as like a voice in the back of your head slowly taken over through the entire game. Oh wow. That's so you wild. get and there's some moments specifically when Batman gets hit with fear toxin where Joker just takes over and Dang. it's, it's, it's framed like Joker takes the wheel and yeah. Batman just starts fucking laying people out. It's absolutely nuts. Damn. Dude. I was like, why is there not a story? Why is, why, this is the shit that movies should be based on because Fair it's enough. out there. It's, 
sort of based on the long Halloween, but not really. Yeah. So uh, it, it was excellent playthrough. I just got into the post game and uh, Deathstroke's the main villain in the end game. Oh. So I'm, I'm, it's like, there's a bunch of crazy shit. Damn. That's fucking wild, man. Yeah. Like that's always been surprising to me about DC. It's like there, that's always been like their alternative forms of media. Yeah. Uh, outside of like the big screen, I guess. Yeah. That, it's like Marvel, like, Marvel continues to rule the big screen. Yeah, yeah, but they, but DC kind of, you know, they they have a knack for the other, you know. Yeah, I mean, they get talented people to make their games. Look at Injustice; it's made by the Mortal Kombat guys, and for real, like that's a blast. And then you have their phenomenal animated shows. Mm -hmm. Like I just started watching Harley Quinn on uh, on HBO. Harley Quinn's so fucking good. It's really good. I've only seen a couple episodes, but I really enjoyed it. I've I've never given more of a shit about that character than like watching that show. It's just it's <laughs> it's just so entertaining. It's like it's like a DC Archer mix. Yeah. you know what I mean. Absolutely. Like, but yeah, yeah. DC's got you know. I mean, supposedly they get they got they got shit coming up. You know what I mean? There you like, go. Even in live action. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, Segway. I, was it, was it just today or was it yesterday? Am I living in a time warp? I don't know. Uh, but Black Adam, I believe, just started filming. Yes, with Pierce fucking Brosnan as well, Dr. Fate. I don't even, like, I... Excellent, excellent. I, I, yeah, like, I I do, like, you know, I think that's a fantastic casting, but I was just like, how did they rope Pierce Brosnan into this? Like, you know, over, I, over, over the always, weekend... I watched um, the the um, oh that shitty Netflix film with Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams, the where it's like the singing contest, it, the European oh, singing oh contest. God, I, I watched that like when it came. Eurovision. Out. Eurovision. Eurovision. Oh Pierce Brosnan's in that, so I guess if you give him enough money, he'll do anything. Dude, that's what I mean though. The dude just like surprises me with the random ass shit he pops up in these days. So maybe we shouldn't be that surprised. <laughs> But, but no, I think it's awesome because, because, you know, Dr. Fate will be an interesting character to play with in that. Oh, movie, yeah. I think not that I know like too many specifics about that movie off the top of my head, but it's probably building up to be like, you know, the, the DC movie, you know, that will hopefully change the tide for them. I bet, I bet yeah. that's what they're going for there. I wonder where it falls in the multiverse. Because the Batman. <laughs> yeah, dude, for real. Oh, God, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so dude. They said the Batman is on Earth 2. Rob Pattinson is... Uh, or, <laughs> I mean, Pattinson, Pattinson. Batman Pattinson is apparently set on Earth 2, which will be interesting. I think there's a lot of speculation about that to begin with. Yeah. Uh, but it seems like they're trying to make concrete moves towards the multiverse. And uh, so it's hard to tell if that's just like sort of like a, yeah, sure, we'll set it on Earth 2 or if it's yeah. like a planned thing. You know what I mean? You know, I think like everything with DC's film franchise, it feels a bit unearned. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, again, <laughs> I mean, like they just canceled New Gods and like some other movie. Yeah, yeah. So who the fuck but the knows? other movie sounded fucking stupid, dude. It was yeah. like it was like a, a a movie about the trench. Like the other- oh yeah, it was the trench. Which <laughs> I'm pretty sure DC does the same thing as Sony with with the <laughs> Spider Man films, where it's like something was successful. Let's Madam Web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silk, yeah, yeah. fucking silk. <laughs> like, yeah, they just like, they just pull these like random projects out of their ass, and they're just like, yes, and, they can- and then they cancel them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so well, I mean, yeah, they very well could be like, it's on Earth too. But then, if the Flash movie or like Black Adam doesn't work out, mm-hmm. they're gonna be like, all right, we're we're gonna push Crisis on Infinite Earths like another like two decades out. Yeah. Like that- that's, that's destroy it destroy it destroy it yeah i know it's it's like they're gonna be like it's like the dark universe almost Dude. you know it's well it's fucking how did that shit at the beginning of the mummy before they had any credits in their name yeah that's what i mean like they they just went so boldly into that like they they're just like yeah all right we've got russell crowe we've got johnny depp as the invisible man we've got like yeah you know they, yeah Another and, they, and they all banked it on Tom. Whoa. 
<laughs> all banked it on Tom. <laughs> Tom, Tom Cruise, t- dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Oh my god, that movie was garbage. It was. But it- we got we 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 got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. Russ, Russell Crowe is also going to be in Love and Thunder. Oh my god! Sw- yeah, switching dude. to Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Quit. Like, uh, wh- I wonder what has there been a casting announcement with it, or just the fact that he's on this, like, uh, in the movie. Uh, I, I think it was a formal casting announcement. I wonder what he. I wonder what he's playing, man. Like that, I don't know. That that's interesting. That cast is kind of like. I mean, some of it is. Melissa McCarthy is playing Hella, and it looks like they're going to do another one of the like. Uh, those like, like skits plays. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And oh, who was it? He was in. Um, he was in the hunt for the uh, hunt for the wilder people and Peaky Blinders. Sam. Mm. I don't I remember. Uh, remember head. the cop with the fucking mustache in Peaky Blinders first season? Oh, dude, no. Fuller hat? Oh, uh, uh, whatever. He played. He played. Uh, he played <laughs> Odin sorry. in the uh, in the theater scene, oh, okay. and he's back along okay. with the other Hemsworth. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, I, I I guarantee you, they're doing like some sort of like reenactment of Ragnarok or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, like it's you know at first Maybe he'll with, play Surter. Oh, dude, there you go. That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> he's gotten quite big himself, you know. That's yeah, a, yeah. It's, a big, it's a big role. Yeah, uh, <laughs> white man. Uh, the yeah, dude. What else did you got? See, do you see um Tobey Maguire's stunt man? I was gonna bring this up. Yeah, yeah. Making mentions of like things that we I dare want to speak its name at this point because I feel I like it's a myth. The We've been sp- burned so many times. Live action Spider Verse. Like, I feel like I feel like <laughs> Hawkeye in Endgame. Don't give me hope. <laughs> oh, dude, he's so edgy. He's edgy. So well. edgy. Uh, but seriously though, I've heard this. Like I've heard that there's been like Andrew Garfield has also had like a similar person close to him that's worked with that works with him mentioned that you know it seems like both of these cats have been potentially in the movie or have filmed yeah. in the movie so i don't i really don't know what to believe i think it's it could just be marvel fucking with us they have it they've gotten re- they've gotten really good about fucking with fans you know what i mean yeah i keep saying i you know <laughs> i've just gotten conscious of that but seriously i what, what do you make of it though in general what do you have hope do you i don't i don't know anymore man like i, I really don't yeah. All all that I'm willing to say certainly is that Doctor Strange is in it. <laughs> like that's about it. Fair. <laughs> Somebody we, said the other day. I saw the other day that, like, that. Mm-hmm. I saw the other day that like Ned Leeds is supposed to go full hobgoblin, and I was like, that's probably not gonna happen. I saw that rumor too. That one surprised me. I was like, he's such a nice character though. <laughs> yeah. Should we should we crank out just a few more of the uh the rumors slash news slash just yeah, a quick hot few hot takes what we what? missed? What else you got? What else you got? Okay, uh, Sylvester Stallone is King Shark. Oh shit! In the yeah. Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad trailer was really fucking awesome. Starro, dude, Star <laughs> Starro was such a surprise to me. I'm but blown away. So is Stallone. So is Stallone as King Shark. Like I've been, yeah. I've been wondering who's who, like how that role is gonna be, and like it was just kind of he's now dc's group you know what i mean (laughs) sweet i'm down with it yeah for sure 100 um vin diesel's son is going to play uh dominic young dominic toretto in fast nine (laughs) (laughs) gotta keep it in the family about the family (laughs) Dude, um, it doesn't surprise me about the Fast and the Furious franchise. Dude, it doesn't surprise uh, me either. Speaking of Vin Diesel, I just recently finally watched that Bloodshot movie, and this oh movie, yeah, I literally wrote down, cool but a little too edgy for me. And then, <laughs> That's how it looked. I never watched it. That was my notes. So Vin Diesel's, you know, keeping it up. I bet his son will too. Yeah. I heard that wasn't. I heard it wasn't bad. Yeah, cool graphics, I guess. Um, uh, <laughs> Suicide Squad: The Air Cut might be happening. That's interesting. I'm a po- in a, living in a post Snyder Cut world, uh, you know, anything's possible at this point. I guess you I'll know, say. I think that's so. The story behind Suicide Squad is that they had one kick-ass trailer, and mm-hmm. they gave the movie to the editing house that did the trailer to edit the whole thing, and Ew. it was their first time ever editing a feature film. Yeah, that's a whole different art. Oh, like, for sure. Editing a, tra- a good trailer is different than a good movie. And when bastards. I heard that, when I heard that, I was like, it makes sense. 
Yeah, there's Tons probably a lot chopped. Um, I'd be interested. Would you? Would you watch it? I, I would. I mean, I thought there was some that that film, like most of DC stuff, was ripe with good ideas and just like poorly executed, or in, there was some kind of intervention with it. Agreed. Um, uh, Transformers reboot hmm. that is going to be directed by the showrunner, written and directed by the showrunner from Daredevil. That is the most intriguing part of the news. I know. I I was. I took a double take when I saw this. How do you think that that that'll turn out? Could you could you imagine like I'm just picturing modern Optimus Prime jammed into like a gritty Daredevil <laughs> realistic setting? You know, so actually to to go back to Lucas's gaming minute for a minute, uh, the bloop shabop, uh the <laughs> I played when I was like a teenager. Uh, or like an early teenager when i got an xbox for the first time i played these games called um fall of cybertron and war for cybertron okay. where it was the transformers on cybertron before they left and it was sort of documenting the events that happened before the decepticons end up destroying the world oh shit and okay. it was fucking sweet <laughs> like it was they were genuinely well made and they were well reviewed mm-hmm. and it was like all the Transformers were to scale. The voice acting was sick. I'd want to see that because we all, we'll yeah. talk about it with Godzilla and Kong. Everybody, everybody just wants to see the monsters hitting each other. It's true, Nobody man. wants to fucking deal with the human bullshit. I don't want another shy surprise. Just give me the fucking Transformers punching each other on Cybertron, <laughs> man. And like, yeah. if they hit the balance like they did in Bumblebee, Bumblebee I think is good. I, I don't know I've if you watched it. it. I don't know if I it's have. like Haley, Se- Hay- Haley Seinfeld is not bad at it. And she's like the most tolerable human character in any of those films. Fair. And it's like well-directed action. It's really, it's really not bad. Fair. So oh, give it a passing, a pass, a passing rate. Right. I think, I think if we can see something that deviates <laughs> from what we saw with Michael Bay enough as stylistically different yeah. while giving us what we want, I'm down. Well, uh, there was like a Netflix series that came out that was like an animated series. That I heard kind it of fucking sucked. I, yeah, it was centered around like the I think kind of the idea of like what you were talking about those games, you know, yeah. post the destruction of Cybertron and whatnot, or pre the yeah, destruction yeah. of Cybertron. But I don't know. Yeah, I'd be interested to explore the world. Transformers are fucking cool, man. Yeah. Uh, but like, it, it's yeah. I think everybody's just got such a bad taste because of Michael Bay, and I'm sure that's not the only reason people have a bad taste with michael bay but you've watched I, the movie from the 80s yeah the transformers oh, film yeah yeah the, yeah the, oh yeah the animated movie fuck yeah. yeah dude the heartbreak you got the touch dude it's fucking you funny. got the power yes it's yeah oh what a classic <laughs> yeah i'd be interested though i i'll definitely check it out when it comes out uh so shall we shall we get to the uh the new releases we can spend yeah, a minute on Falcon the Winter Soldier, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We got the, the – well, well, I've watched episodes one through three. Yes, and I've watched one through four. Uh, this is being recorded on the ninth, so the fourth episode came out today. It's true. It's You're true. too busy working. You're yeah, fucking yeah. low life. Yeah, homie's got to earn money. I, uh, 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 anyway, because this podcast doesn't pay yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> – once is on yet. Yeah, emphasis on yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, one through three was like it's an interesting build up. The first episode obviously is some really good like where are they? Yeah, uh, you know, excellent action to start it. Characters, yeah, yeah. Sam has a great like action sequence. You don't get much action from Bucky, like to be frank. I think yeah. you know, and any you do is is pretty like it seems like pretty smart, like pretty quick. Except for yeah. I except. Uh, in the third episode, but we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, so the you first, do the uh, quick in the first episode. You get the quick Winter Soldier bit flashback where he kills fair. the dude's son. Yeah, and that, but that's probably like the most action you get out of him in the first episode. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but it, again, it's like some good character building, and it's some you know setting. It's, it sets the atmosphere and the tone for the show. Absolutely. Uh, Sam gives up the shield. Obviously, John Walker takes it and becomes. U.S. agent, aka Captain America. So the so we can just hop straight into the second episode then. Yeah, John Walker. I don't fucking hate him like some mm. of the internet does. He's he's dislikable. 
He's complex. Yes, he's yeah. He's a complex like character. Him, but I also don't hate him. No, dude, I don't fucking hate him either. He thinks he's doing right, and that's yeah. you know, and uh, and it's not like an unadmirable thing he's trying to strive for. I think. Yeah, absolutely. He's just trying. He's just trying to do his job well. Exactly. And he's he's faced with insurm- an insurmountable legacy. Yeah, that's the thing, dude. Like, if you think about it, they build him up to be basically just like a really good soldier. Yeah. <laughs> and ca- like, Captain America was juiced up. You know what yeah. I mean? The, I mean, uh, it's like this guy looks fucking crazy. Like, he looks he looks ripped. He's like the oh, pinnacle sure. of the normal human condition. Yeah, I'd say he's yeah he's he's like Bruce Wayne condition. You know, maybe not Absolutely. as like maybe not as well trained in the martial arts and all that shit. But yeah. however, he throws the shield really well. He handles himself in combat. It seems it seems like really well. But yeah. he seems to be kind of fucking hot tempered, man. Oh yeah, and like and like that's the thing that's going to be his downfall. Is Martha. Uh, <laughs> just had to throw that in there <laughs> it's always it's always got a spot <laughs> once uh, episode dude but seriously like uh you see some action in, in the second episode you see some action with uh the fake car chase yeah yeah there's the, like the flag smashers get involved with what like uh what are they stealing in that episode? I fucking uh, medicine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's for right. the re- for the refugee camps because they're not inherently douchebags. Like that's the thing about the flag. Yeah, smashers. like they they they're building them up to be kind of sympathetic characters. But anyway, yeah. they they go toe to toe with Sam and Bucky, which is a cool sequence. Is what we all thought. It's a the sweet trip. sequence. Yeah, it, and but, the, but surprisingly, when John Walker and what's his pal, uh, Battlestar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I cringe when I hear that. I fucking, I fucking love when they're driving after that sequence in the Jeep mm-hmm. and the dude goes, I'm Ballstar. And Bucky goes, Ballstar? Yeah. Stop the car and he gets out. Yeah, dude. I, I think it's so fucking funny. Uh, like, but the, he has, him and John Walker have a really good, uh, you know, back and forth. They have, they have, yeah. like, they work really well together. But anyway, when they joined that fight, it actually was kind of interesting. You know, like he, yeah. Like I said, they they seem to both kind of hold their own there for a bit. Yeah, they're not bad. They eventually yeah. got overpowered because they're normal people fighting super soldiers. Exactly. Which, and where did that soul that serum come from? That's the that 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 was like kind of the question. Yeah. Lingering over this whole shit. So synthesized from the blood of <laughs> fucking um, Isaiah Bradley, which yeah called it knew it was gonna happen. This show lays on the the societal satire pretty thick yo dude it it does man and i think that's totally fine a good comic book series does that as well absolutely and, and uh you know like what as soon as they introduced that introduced that character the like the weight of the show just you know it just got heavy a little heavier yeah it got heavier um and that was fucking i i, I applaud them for taking that fucking move you know what absolutely I mean? and uh quick quick trivia um, the dude who plays Isaiah Bradley is the guy who voices Martian Manhunter in like every animated DC project. That's fucking dope, dude. <laughs> yeah. Martian Which, Manhunter in the Justice League Unlimited is like one of my favorite versions of the Martian Manhunter. So he's like old, but he's mm-hmm. fucking yoked. Like it's insane. Dude, what, what kind of, I can't remember what he threw into the wall, but he's just like, you know, he doesn't even look like he throws it that hard himself, yeah. but he just like flings this shit right, in, right into the wall and sticks. And it's just you know, the guy is yeah. I, and then they immediately followed up with the police scene with uh, Sam getting Sam getting racially profiled by the police yeah. because they don't didn't recognize him. Yeah, and just is- it just hammers home that point of like, yeah, there was a black super soldier, no one fucking knew about him. And and you you keep seeing more and more instances of that, whether it's with uh, Sam's sister not being able to get a loan, mm-hmm. and it sort of it ties into the episode you haven't seen. I'll say that. Fair, uh, but yeah, I, I, again, like it's they they keep you, like you said they keep laying uh, these little like breadcrumbs for people to start like picking up on as to like yeah. that, that side of the show, and it's I don't know I think. I think it's like I said. I think it's a great. This show's a great conduit for, perhaps a little message there. You know exactly. But I mean, um, do you think that they're gonna if you also use this as a, perhaps a way of introducing, uh, the what's his name, Young Patriot, which is like, 
Isaiah, Isaiah's grandson. Uh, the dude who opened the door. Yeah, yeah. So rumor has I, it that Van B has been quietly trying to build a, a young Avengers roster. And some you're starting to see stuff. some of those characters popping up. I think they'd be remiss to not make an attempt at it. Agreed. I think that'd be really fucking cool. I uh, think. Yeah. Yeah, and man. We, we end that episode. And also, quickly, one more thing on the whole racism angle. Mm-hmm. The irony is not lost to me that they gave Captain America a black sidekick again after oh. the after Sam Wilson joined the squad, the original squad. Yeah. It's like nobody really pushed him to try and be Captain America, but they yeah. were happy to take the shield back, give it to a white dude and put a black dude like next to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like that, that w- was a really weird move. And like, unfortunately what it sends is like the wrong message because Captain America, you know, well, Steve Rogers and, it wasn't a race thing. And Sam were just, were, were very close friends. And like, yeah. that was, you know, why they worked so well together. And that's why they suited up together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah, that, that was fucking wacky. Wacky. You know, you're just like, what the shit is happening right now? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And by the end of that episode, we start seeing a bit more of the seriousness of John Walker start coming out. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, episode three, we get Zemo coming back in a sick prison break. Dude, yeah, that was that was fucking cool. The like the way they brought Zemo into the fold of this show, yeah, was pro, like a high, definitely a highlight of this episode. For me. Absolutely. Um, but, so, but you know, his continued role throughout the episode was really fucking interesting too, because he kind of just took control. Yeah, like, you know, he was number, just like <laughs> one. Zemo is a charisma machine for sure, for except sure. for his dance moves. Oh yeah, <laughs> shit. Um. But he he like knows his shit. He's fucking loaded. They call him Baron Zemo. Yeah, he's in the outfit pretty much. Yeah, and he, as he reminds you, he is a, a Baron, so that's why he has access to a private plane and yeah. all this rich this rich person rich people shit. So. And an old butler. You call him Evil Batman. Yeah. Dude. Uh, the so they go to Mandapore. Mm-hmm. Which is fucking nuts. I guess you can see Wolverine's favorite bar in the background. You can see the sign. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's a wild place. I think I saw an article call it the MCU's Mos Eisley. Yeah. And I thought that was, actually, that's a good description. Yeah, I was like, that's fucking cool. Like a heart, a uh, place for fuck for the CD side of, of yeah. the universe. I'm intrigued to see who's going to play the power broker. Me too. Because that's a that was a drop I was not expecting. Yeah. I didn't think it was, he was going to end up being a big bad. I thought it was just going to be like a kind of a background mention of a name yeah, or something. They're but, really hyping him up. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, and then, so, but we still haven't seen him. Mm. And we see Sharon Carter again. And she's, be, she's become jaded and alienated like she does in the comics, which I sort of love. For, yeah. And she kicks ass, man. She's fucking badass in this episode. There's some John Wick shit. Dude, she was taking people out. Like <laughs> It was like, fucking incredible. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. That, that was pretty cool to see. And she's apparently like, you know, just uber rich and just, you know, th- selling like illegal art or something like that <laughs> on the side. <laughs> yeah. <it's> just, <laughs> nothing screams. I'm morally ambiguous now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so knock off paintings. Yeah. Yeah. But, and uh, we start seeing more of the flag smashers as well, starting to liberate shit and yeah. Start getting a bit of a killmonger vibe from them in that episode. Oh, good call. Like they do they, again, like they're, they're kind of, you're, they're, you're, you're, they're supposed to be sympathetic and, yeah. you know, they give, they're helping out refugees and you start learning about again, a little more about like how the world is post, uh, post snap. Post Pre- blip. Post blip. <laughs> oh, man. Good there call. it is. <laughs> And so, it, you know, it, it is kind of just interesting to see. I don't think they're inherently bad. I think they're doing a good thing just in a really yeah. bad way. But then they start taking a little bit of a turn, I think. Like, don't they uh, – doesn't – Good blow up a building. Yeah. yeah, with hostages in it. Yeah. That was that was a bit wild. I was just like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> that's, that's why I say make the Killmonger comparison. Because I definitely think that this series is going to end with them being like, eh, the, the Flag Smashers were a bit right. But yeah. I think that that was one of the most effective parts of Black Panther Agreed. was having a villain that was so easy to agree with. Yeah. You saw both sides of the story. You know? Yeah. It's like, um, yeah, he's fucked up. He's killing, Killmonger was murdering people. 
Mm-hmm. He was, his, his methods were too brutal, but there was a, there was a appropriate end game that he wanted to achieve that could be achieved through other methods. And by the end of that movie, T'Challa learned. And I, once again, not to spoil the next episode, but they're, they discuss that a lot more. And interesting. It, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly, quickly say here, we should probably just hold off on Godzilla. We're going to do another episode in a few days. Oh yeah. Yeah. Godzilla and Kong can wait. wait I, we'll, we'll, we'll hold off on it. We just finish this up with uh, Falcon, the winter soldier. For sure. The, um, I definitely think that these first three episodes were like, they're good. They're not, I, they're nothing extraordinary though. Agreed. It's, they're all it building feels, to something. Yeah. And um, it feels like, I remember me and Kate were talking after the first three episodes have been released and we were like, you know, it's like, it feels like setup, but it also feels sort of like a first edit, you know, like the writing could have been a bit tighter. Mm. It feels like a mid, it feels like an unoffensive Marvel film, but nothing I would liken to the good shit, you know? Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I it feels like a Captain America one, you know, <laughs> I was just going to say it's, it's no Captain America two. It's, yeah. It's no, but you know, like if you, okay. Then if, if you can off the cuff, cause, cause I still haven't seen it and I don't want to yeah. speak for the hot dogs, but like, what would you say are some things about this, uh, episode four, that episode are four? or uh, like worth it? Full yeah. imagery. Okay. You know, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. And it, it's like shit hit the fa- hits the fan and it, <laughs> like powerful imagery. Shit hits the fan. <laughs> it, exactly. And, and they, and actually like the dialogue becomes amazingly tighter. There's a, like really good performances in the episode as well. Okay, cool, man. And I was like, so <laughs> going into episode four, I was like, ah, maybe it's like, maybe it's going to be sort of meh. But then I was like, fuck, yeah. like it's starting to, it's, it's starting to work. Like the, the lead up work started paying off, I think. So I think the second half of the season is going to be really strong. Fuck yeah. That's so we, we cool, will, cool. we're like at time. We'll, we'll talk about probably Falcon, the winter soldier episode four more in detail. Yeah. Yeah. Early next week. And then if we're getting this up as soon as we can, yeah. uh, and then we'll talk King Kong and versus Godzilla. Oh yeah. We'll talk about everything. Well, yeah. We'll definitely catch up on that episode. King Kong, Godzilla, and whatever the fuck else is, kept, is happening in the, in between now and then. But yeah, yeah. we're back. We're basically going to try and get back right on schedule. And then we'll took, be, uh, took a little break as everyone needs to. Sometimes life gets you, but that's the, uh, you know, that's why it's the matinee edition, I guess, you know, take a break, enjoy this while you can <laughs> hopefully we'll be able to go and watch a movie maybe maybe we'll go watch black widow that's some fucking news we forgot oh black shit widow's, yeah black widow's coming out in july and it's gonna be on disney plus as well yeah well that just means we should watch that together yeah That'd we're both fun. get your vaccines hot dogs come on yeah we're both, both gotten our we're, we're partially vaccinated